Okay. 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 So air is a mixture of gases. It has mass. It takes up space. It has um, the mixture contains things like nitrogen, uh, oxygen, um, carbon dioxide, argon, many other things in small quantities, and water vapor. So I'm going to point this at you guys now, and hope that it will stand up. The camera broke, so we are hoping to film. Okay, I will aim it eventually. We'll do. Okay. So, the moisture content of the air that we're breathing is called humidity. Uh, humidity can be measured different ways for different purposes. So, absolute humidity is one way. Absolute humidity is the mass of water vapor in a given volume um, of air. So if, let's say I took one cubic meter, so I got a meter stick and I measured a length, a width, and a height, um, and I took one cubic meter of air, so that's a volume, right? I measured the mass of the water vapor. Maybe I took the air in that cubic meter, cooled it down so all the water vapor condensed, and I can measure its mass. Um, so I could find the mass of water vapor in a given volume. So it would be like mass per unit volume, just like density kind of. Um, when air is completely saturated, aim for the board maybe. Can we see the board? When air is completely saturated with absolutely all the water vapor it can hold, um, then nothing more can evaporate, even if there's plenty of water available. Saturated air is holding all it can. Uh, the saturation of the amount of, of water vapor in the air uh, changes with the temperature. Uh, have you noticed that in the winter, we tend to have dry weather. We tend to have uh, low humidity. That's why in the winter, when you scooch across the carpet, you can shock people, because it's it's low humidity, so static electricity can build up more easily. Uh, in the summer, of course, we're all, especially after last week, oh, it's so humid, it makes it feel so hot. Uh, in the summer, of course, the temperatures are higher. That means that the hot air can hold more water vapor. Hot air holds more water vapor. I'm probably not aimed at all. Um, so, temperature controls the amount of water vapor that air can hold. Um, relative humidity is the other way. So humidity can be measured in absolute humidity, the amount that a particular volume of air has, the mass of water vapor in a given volume of air. Relative humidity is a ratio, the amount of water in the air compared to the maximum amount that it could hold at a given temperature. I like to think of relative humidity as like the air's grade. So let's say you guys just took tests, I collected them, I'll grade them. This cannot possibly be a dry erase marker. Okay. So, um, you'll get a grade on your test, right? Um, most of these tests have, say, 10 questions or 15 questions. Um, we'll try a few. So let's say you get eight questions right out of 10, right? I write your grade as a ratio. This is a ratio. The number right as compared to the number of questions there are in all, right? If I divide 8 by 10, uh, I find that I get this, 0.8. But that's not the grade that I give you, right? I don't say you got a 0.8. No. So to find your grade, of course, you multiply by 100%. And you would find that that is an 80% on the test, right? Um, one that's a little harder, so grab a pencil, maybe a calculator if you really need it. I bet you could do it without. Let's say uh, if you have a test that's out of 15 questions, let's say you get 14 right out of 15. So how would you find your grade? I really hope this is working. There. So, if you get a 14 out of 15 on a test, what's your grade, Duchesne? 
93%. So you type in your calculator 14 divided by 15, and what did it give you? 0.93333. Okay, so you rounded uh, 0 0.93333. We'll round to 0 0.93. You multiply by the 100%, and you find that you get a 93% for your grade. Well, relative humidity is very similar to the air getting a grade, okay? So we take the ratio of how much water... Uh, the air is actually holding, um, let's see, if, say the air could hold like one gram per uh, meter cubed, right? Uh, and perhaps the air it is holding that much, let's say it could hold two grams per meter cubed. That's a ratio, right? Now my units cancel. When you have grams per meter cubed divided by grams per meter cubed, they go away. So I just have a ratio of 1 to 2, right? 0 0.5, 1 half, right? So that means my relative humidity would be what? Well, you do the same exact thing. You multiply by 100%. Just like getting a grade for the air, relative humidity here is 50%. Right, the air is holding 50% of the moisture that it could. So, uh, make sure that you understand percents like this to calculate your grade and to calculate relative humidity because that could appear on the test. So, and you always want to be able to keep track of your grade and make sure that I haven't made a mistake. Um, always check. It's a good idea because I do make mistakes sometimes. So, um... Relative humidity is oftentimes what you're going to hear on the weather report. And by module 6 and 7, you guys are going to be experts at the weather report every day for a month. So, uh, oh, and speaking of that, watch the clouds. Just have a look every day. What do you see? What do you notice? Just kind of get familiar with looking up every day. I see big puffy clouds, and I notice it's colder than yesterday. Oh, I see lots of clouds covering the whole sky and it's getting warmer than yesterday. Just try to kind of watch general trends. How does the weather go? What are you seeing in the sky? Uh, and that might help you with things that are going to happen in Module 6. Uh, it's, it's good to just look at clouds beforehand before you really have to know stuff, I think. So, sweating. Sweating is something that we all did a lot of last week, probably, because it was incredibly hot. Um, but sometimes sweating is not all that effective at cooling us off, like last week when it was also incredibly humid. Um, so let's think about what happens. So our body has, its, has been designed by God with this beautiful mechanism to cool ourselves off. We get hot, we sweat, and how does that cool us off? Does anyone remember? I'm going to point the camera at something else. Yay! Okay, go ahead, Joshua. Water evaporates from the skin, forming energy, which brings the coolness of your skin. Okay, so it takes energy for the water to evaporate from your skin. Where does that energy come from? The water, the droplets that evaporate. Well, the droplets are there, but they can't get energy from themselves. Where do um, they get it? The from... No, from you. Your body is making heat, right? You are warm-blooded, right? You make heat. Your body keeps its temperature at 98.6, although I think my poor baby might be a little hotter right now. Um, so you keep your body at 98.6. That energy that you continuously make is given to the water when you're hot. It gives the water some energy, and the water gets energy, and when water molecules get enough energy they can evaporate so they take away energy to evaporate so they remove energy from you and removing energy from you does what cools you off so that's the whole thing so um each individual water molecule I'll just pan around. each individual water molecule needs to have a certain amount of energy um to be able to convert from liquid water to gas, okay? It takes a certain amount of energy. Every molecule that goes from liquid to gas has to acquire that amount of energy. And 
when, like say you have a drop of sweat, individual water molecules acquire energy from you. They take that energy when they evaporate, leaving you with less energy that cools you off. But is that boiling? Uh, that's kind of a hard thing. So when we say evaporating, we don't think that that water droplet has reached 100 degrees um, Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit, the boiling point of water, right? Uh, it's just individual molecule by molecule happens to acquire extra energy from colliding with stuff or um, being heated up by your skin, and then it can go. When water is boiling, like in a big pot of water boiling, then it uh, reaches the temperature at which every molecule has enough energy to boil away, and then the ones at the surface are able to escape and become gas, and eventually they all do at that temperature. Um, but either way, molecules need to acquire energy to convert from a liquid to a gas. Uh, or, like say ice melting, that's water also, right? Solid water is ice. To convert from solid to liquid water, each molecule has to acquire enough energy to make the change from solid to liquid. So energy um, is required to change phase from solid to liquid, from liquid to gas. I know, I think so too. Do you want me to take them or come? Uh, I don't know. I'm still crying, so whatever you want to do. If you're willing to watch him, I'll try to get through class quickly and then okay. sorry. Okay. Alright, so we tried to do it. So we talked about sweating, that's good. Um okay, let's do some lab work so we at least get that part uh, and make sure we understand what's going on. So here's your lab paper for today. We're going to whether we really can measure the amount of energy that is required for um, for something like sweating, where water is going from a liquid to a gas. Um, is it taking away energy and really cooling something off? So I've got three thermometers right here, and I'm going to read them as Celsius thermometers. And right now they all say... Mm -hmm. I have to be careful. So, I might have to label them here. I'm going to label thermometer 1, 2, and 3. And then I'll try to read them. Looks like thermometer 1 is 1, 2, 3, 23 degrees Celsius. And thermometer 2, just to it looks like it's between 23 and 24 degrees Celsius. Maybe 23.5 degrees Celsius. And thermometer 3 is definitely almost 25 degrees Celsius if the thing will focus. So they're all different in the same room. That's fascinating. That means that each one is perhaps not accurate, or at least only one of them is accurate. So I'll write that on the board for you. Um, so, maybe I'll put it down here. So we've got 23, 23.5, and 25. All right, so that's reading room temperature. I also have some water and some alcohol that are sitting here at room temperature. And I'm going to moisten some cotton balls with this one with the alcohol. Now, your book only calls for doing this with water. But I thought alcohol would be interesting. So has anyone been to, like, the doctor's office and they clean you with alcohol before they give you a shot? And how does it feel when your skin gets rubbed with alcohol? It feels cool, right? When the alcohol evaporates from your skin, what happens, Bethany? Right, your skin feels really cold. 
because alcohol evaporates and takes away energy. So I am going to put alcohol soaked cotton balls around this thermometer and I'm going to put water soaked cotton balls around that thermometer and we'll see if their temperatures change a little bit or if they don't. Um, let's look at the lab sheet though and um, so you guys have all seen, oh I'm filming my paper, that's great. So uh, we put alcohol soaked cotton balls around this thermometer and water soaked cotton balls around this thermometer and we're going to look for an energy change but we'll give it some time. Because it does take time for each um, for each molecule of alcohol or molecule of water to acquire some energy and evaporate. And if enough of those do it, we will actually see a change in temperature. So we'll write an objective. So my objective, what am I trying to do? Anyone want to take a try at writing the objective? Measuring the temperature. Ah, so we're going to measure the temperature change. That the effect of evaporation on temperature, the temperature change that evaporation causes, something like that. I wrote your materials down. I didn't actually include alcohol, but I thought that would be sort of fun because I know alcohol feels cold on your skin. So here's our hypothesis. If a thermometer at a certain temperature is moistened with water that is at room temperature and it sits in a room that's a constant temperature, okay, so remember, our thermometers all started out at a given temperature. Our alcohol and our water have been sitting in this room. Our cotton balls have been sitting in this room. Everything should have started out at exactly the same temperature. But when we compare the three thermometers, will we expect that the thermometer with the moisture surrounding its bulb to stay the same temperature or to have a lower temperature or higher temperature? Anyone want to make a guess? Do you say? Have a lower temperature. So you expect that the water will cause the temperature to drop on that one, the alcohol will cause the temperature to drop on that one. So if you think that, circle go down. If you think that the wet bulbs will rise in temperature, circle go up. If you think, well, everything is at room temperature, how could there be a temperature change? If that water is exactly the same temperature as the thermometer, there's no way that temperature will change. I mean, that makes sense, right? So circles stay the same, and we'll see what happens. Uh, so choose what you would like to circle. You can't be wrong on your hypothesis because you're allowed to write anything you want. Well, you could be wrong, but you're allowed to choose anything you want because you can't know what will happen to the experiment till we try. So procedure. We're going to rewrite each procedure step in the past tense, third person, just like you ought to write in a lab report. So I wrote a direction to you. Record the temperature of the dry thermometers, which we did. We wrote them down here. How would I write that if I were um, going to put it into my lab report to give back to the teacher? So if I tell you to record the temperature, you tell me... Too shame. Temperatures were recorded at... Good. And you don't have to tell me what the temperatures were in the procedure. Just tell me what you did, not what the results are. The results will go in the data section. Okay. So procedure is going to be the, and it should be a complete sentence, temperatures 
of three thermometers were recorded. Thermometers. I really spelled that word badly. <laughs> thermometers. Okay. Um, next, it says take the temperature of the water and record. So, uh, Jesse, how would you rewrite, rewrite? Take the temperature of the water and record. So if I tell you to take the temperature, you say... Anyone else want to try it, Joseph? If I say take the temperature of the water, what do you say? The temperature of the water is recorded. Good. So two will be the temperature of the water was recorded. So when you write a lab report, this is the style that you should write your procedure in. Um, it seems like you should say, I recorded the temperature of the water. But uh, for science writing, we really want to keep human activity out of it and try to keep it very focused on you know, what's going on in the lab. So instead of saying, I recorded the temperature of the water, you want to say the temperature of the water was recorded. This is just the style I want to write it. So soak the cotton balls in water and surround the bulb of one thermo thermometer with wet cotton. So how might you reword that to be in the right style? The cotton balls were soaked in water um, and they surround they surrounded a bulb of the thermometer. Good, and put on the bulb of the thermometer or anything. But the temperature, I mean, the cotton balls were soaked in water and put on the thermometer bulb. That'll be good. I'm not going to write that because, well, maybe I will, just to make sure I give you enough time. And we also did alcohol. have a step for the alcohol, but you could just write the exact same thing except for alcohol. Okay. It's kind of step 3D. Okay, so it says wait three minutes and record the temperature of both thermometers. I think we probably waited about 10. Um, so you, how could you restate that the way that I want you to do it. Ava? The thermometers waited three minutes and the temperature. So you could say the temperature was recorded after, and I said three minutes here, but clearly we've been longer than that, so the temperature was recorded after, and we probably should have timed it, but it's probably been 10 minutes. We could go back and watch the video and see how long. Um, or people who are absent could tell us. <laughs> um, okay, so our data here, um, we've got, well, I, I left data points for two dry thermometers. I only have one here. Um, if I take temperature readings now, uh, this one's 23 degrees. It's exactly the same as it was before. It's the dry one. So the dry thermometer, um, oh, dry thermometer one is 23.0 degrees. Dry thermometer two at the end of the experiment is still 23.0 degrees. It did not change. Uh, the second thermometer has alcohol on it, um, and its current temperature is just about 22 degrees. 
Oh, it almost focused. Okay, about 22 degrees. So the alcohol thermometer went from 23.5 degrees to 22.0 degrees Celsius. So what happened to the temperature with the alcohol? It went down. And then this thermometer, it was 25 degrees, now it's 24 degrees. So the water, it went down, not quite as much as the alcohol, but it did still drop in temperature by about a degree. So, at the end of the experiment we can see that the dry thermometer didn't change temperature, the alcohol thermometer dropped about a degree and a half, and the water thermometer dropped about one degree. You only have a place to record the water thermometer, so if you don't write the alcohol down or if you make a little space to write it somewhere else, that's fine. Um, it also said to take the water temperature.